F major added second chord time, guys. It's me, Miles, and this is the long awaited, long promised review of the new Fleet Foxes record, Crack Up. Uh, so there's two issues here, there's two problems. One is that there's a lot of things that I want to say in so much time. And I'm not entirely sure how to get through them all because I have weird, complicated thoughts. And I want to be like thorough. Second problem is that uh, federal law dictates, I think federal law, everyone I've seen does this, Who everyone who reviews Crack Up would compares it some way or another to Father John Misty's recent record, uh, Pure Comedy. Because Father John Misty used to play drums in Fleet Foxes. This is a problem because I have not listened to Pure Comedy. As a matter of fact, I am only familiar with one Father John Misty song, which is to say I know enough bits of several different Father John Misty performances to constitute about a song's worth of knowledge, um, which is a problem. If I had, you know, integrity or ambition or pretensions of greatness, I would have done more research. I did not. Shame on me. So, uh, but don't worry, I've got comparisons, I've done the research, I was on Wikipedia for about five minutes, I got sidetracked, I'm good, we're ready. Fleet Foxes have been quiet since their 2011 record, Helplessness Blues. And Helplessness Blues has been a long time since I listened to it. I remember big vocal harmonies, and I remember it was, you know, like, it was a folk record, folk, indie folk, folk pop, more on the folk side, I think. And it was a little too ornate for me. It was a little too curly cute. It was a bit like artisan wood carving. It was a bit too much for me. Um, but also, I was getting into weird electronic music and hip hop at the moment. So it was just the wrong thing at the wrong time. But I'm getting back into densely orchestrated very subtle music with rich harmonies in the voices and the instruments. So Crack Up, it was released and I listened to 3rd of May, uh, their first single, and I was like, okay, there's a lot happening. There's a lot happening with the guitars and it's all very clean, very well recorded, and there's a lot of just different things happening, and oh, the chorus sounds completely different from the verse. And it goes back, and it goes back, and it goes forth again. And then there's this new section that's entirely different. And then there are these codas, and the codas is like, okay. A lot happens in that song. And I mean, a lot happens, like, stacked on top of itself. It's dense, and it's long and variegated. A lot happens in that song. And 3rd of May is a good microcosm of the rest of the record more or less. It came out in June, and I forgot about it until July, and I sit down, and I'm like, this is pleasant, this is pleasant, I'm listening to the first song. And then the second part of the first song kicks in. There's a lot of moments where it's quiet, it's like, okay, it's so quiet, and then it gets loud, but it's the kind of loud where everything comes in at once, as opposed to the kind of loud where everything just suddenly just gets loud because you stepped on a false pedal or something. Like I said, everything is very clean, very well recorded, and the arrangement is very nice, and often these uh, changes in volume are accompanied by changes in arrangement and changes in time signature as well, which I appreciate. There are a couple songs, Cassius, which is one of my favorites, has got a fantastic chorus, which is in 3-4. Fool's Aaron does the same thing. And... You know, it's effective, I guess. But where Fool's Aaron really shines, the chorus of Cassius is the best part, but Fool's Aaron shines in the coda, which is completely different to the rest of the song. It's this sort of this atmospheric piano part. And it occurs to me presently that I have gone about uh, four minutes without mentioning Father John Misty. Uh, Father John Misty uh, played the drums on the Fleet Foxes record Helplessness Blues. Uh, I don't know if he played drums on Pure Comedy. I certainly know he didn't play drums on Crack Up. And uh, there are a lot of instruments that are not drums on Crack Up. There are horns and strings and little synthesizers going doodly doodly in the 
beginning of Cassius and at the end of 3rd of May as well. And guitars and basses, and I guess there's drums also, but I don't think about the drums. And voices. Robin Pecknell, the lead singer, stacks his voice and just stacks and stacks and stacks in these massive harmonies that I love dearly. Fantastic harmonies. And the vocals. The lyrics are also... I mean, I don't pay a lot of attention to the lyrics, but there's some nice images, I guess. I should have paid more attention to the lyrics. Um, they're certainly not as... Uh, uh, Father John Misty E as Father John Misty lyrics because Father John Misty has uh, he's like sardonic or something and he has like strong opinions or something I'm not very well versed in Father John Misty but I do know he has a beard he had a beard he might have shaped it he still has the mustache the important thing is that the problem for me with crack up is that I'm afraid that I just like it right now because it's pretty and that I like it because it has songs that do interesting things. And that I'm afraid that when I get to the point where I'm familiar with the record, and once it stops surprising me, I won't like it. Because sometimes there are records that surprise me. I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, but then I don't grow into them. Like, to use examples with which the listening body should be familiar, the Tim Darcy record surprised me, but I didn't like it that much. You know. The uh, Fred Thomas record had a couple surprises, but I didn't really grow into it. I listened to it still occasionally, but it didn't, like, envelop me. The Enablers record surprised me several times, and I really grew into that. It became one of my favorite records that I listened to for that year. And I'm looking at this record and it's very interestingly composed and it's very well arranged with the doodly doodlies and the strings and the sounds and so on and so forth. And I'm afraid it doesn't... I'm afraid I'm just being charmed by its prettiness as opposed to the fact that it's good, but it... I think on the other hand it has to be good because it's been worked over so much. And you could overwork an album. I feel like Helpless is Blues, what little I remember it, was slightly overworked. The melodies were a little too big. The sounds were a little too uh, flannelly, and crack up to its credit is a little sleeker than that. But I'm afraid that I'm just being blinded by. Oh, this is very, very exceptionally pleasant. Again, I'm not sure that that's a reasonable fear, but it's what I'm working with. Uh, Father John Misty, uh, Josh Tillman. Uh, is probably right-handed, and Robin Pecknold is also probably right-handed. There's a comparison. Um, what I come down to, ultimately, is that, again, too much work. It's not sloppy, okay? It's not sloppy. Clearly, he's thought a lot about these records, and the sounds... I say he, I mean Robin Pecknold, but of course, Fleet Fox is a unit which Pecknold sort of leads... And I guess it saying it's good because it's been well worked seems like a cop out. And it's a cop out that I feel I've used before for the Fred Thomas record and for the Do Make Say Think record. But I don't want to penalize this record just because I'm afraid that I'm not a reviewing this from a stable standpoint. Does it move me? Yes. When it surprises me, it wows me. The transition from January to June in On Another Ocean is killer. I keep talking about the about Cassius and then the outro and the choruses, which are miles ahead of the verse. That's a legitimate criticism I will level. The choruses on this record can be much better than the verses at times. Fool's Errand is incredibly guilty of this. <sighs> Cassius to a lesser extent. On another ocean, the January-June dichotomy is very stark. But then you have something like Crack Up, which is, yes, this is very good. This is a very good way to end the record with the song Crack Up. And you listen to it, and three minutes pass, and it's very nice, and it stops. But then there's this horn outro, and it's just his voice and these deep resonating horns and they sort of wash over you and they pull you out of the record they pull you out of that headspace and
And that moment itself is not by itself worth the B plus I'm going to give this record. But it's an album full of such moments. It's full of, this is good, this is nice, and then it gets better. The fact that they could pull that trick so frequently and so consistently to the point where even when you and when you expect it, it becomes a payoff as opposed to a surprise. And does this album pay off? Yes. I think the payoffs in this album are worth it enough for me to give this a B plus. So, uh, in sum, uh, Father John Misty is a man with a beard and he used to play the drums and now he plays the guitar and he left a band that released a record, which I'm giving a B plus to release a record, which I don't intend to listen to at any point in the near future. Sue me. Sue me, Josh Tillman. I'll see you in court. <laughs>